Oh, thank you. So like we were saying in the previous session, we need to begin to understand how the Bible comes in, into play. You know, when, when we understand how, what the Bible means, what it's doing to, to, to humanity, then we're going to come out of the shackles of, um, remember we know that religion has been used also to blind people. So they will use it to blind you into something else, but we want to explain the Bible the way it was meant to be for humanity and how it helps you to come out of these shackles, these uh, mm, slavery. So I'll continue. I was saying that uh, the, the, the five books, the, the, the Torah, they are, they are explaining God's purpose on earth. And we're saying God's purpose on, on earth is to dwell into the lowest part of creation. So we need to understand that the five books are all the, 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 the plan of God. And I was saying in any plan, when you're planning something, you need to begin to understand that um, your plan must have uh, these plans. For example, you need to understand your cast, who is going to do your plan. So the first book we say is the who, it's about people, that's why it, it, it expresses you, it talks about Abraham, Jacob, Joseph, I mean, all that stuff until it, it, it culminates into the 12 tribes. That's the first book, it's a who, it's about the cast. And the second book is location, where. So who, where. The third book is how, see? And we said, first book is, 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 the, is the cast people, then where, where, in Exodus, we see God explain, explaining to us the plan for the tabernacle in, in painstaking detail. And, and we know that the tabernacle is, is us. That's how complicated we are. That's how God, God has wired us to be his residence. And the third book is how. How, because when man sinned and lost dominion, how, the third book is about sacrifices. We need to burn our, our body, burn ourselves. Like Paul says, we, we need to die every day to where and so far doesn't exist. Moape doesn't exist, it's just God. You know, there's the, the allegorical meaning of uh, Noah is very deep. If you read the ancient books of the Jews, they'll tell you that when the Bible says uh, Noah was a righteous man, Noah walked with God and was not because God took him. Some people thought God took him literally and took him to heaven. You see? But when you begin to understand these things, when you're walking with the truth, the, the truth is going to take you. It's going to kill you. Some The Jews will explain to you that Noah be, began to, to, to move away from society because of the truth, the, the, what the truth was doing to him. Noah was born from a family. He was someone's child. The truth be begins to elevate him. He becomes a child of the universe because he's, he's representing God. Everyone looks to him, you know, and he is still Noah. But the truth further killed Noah, that Noah begin to understand that natural occurrences don't affect the way he feels. He had no part with what is happening on the earth. Whatever the earth throws at him does not affect him because it's not about him. He's, he's, he's not going along with other people in, 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 in banqueting, rioting, in partying, in doing these uh, worldly things which supposedly gives them peace. But this man was given to the truth. God took him. The truth took him. When you looked at Noah, eventually you, 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 you didn't recognize Noah. The way he felt, the way he, 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 he spoke, the way he related to people, he became the truth itself, the embodiment of the truth. That is why the Bible comes to say, it was said you are God unto them to whom the word of God came, to people like Noah. 
So when that's the how, sacrifice, will you give up your life for the truth? So now we begin to go into practical understanding of these things. But these are, we are trying to see into the future how I'm showing you, although I know there are a lot of things you need to understand, sometimes I'll throw in this so that you begin to know what the future holds for us, where we're going to. So the first book is who, second book is where, the third book is how, the fourth book is when. Because we have to have a report on how we are, we are doing. It's the what is it so the, the question is how, when is going to God going to go in the lowest part of, of his creation? We have to have a report. So the question is, is the world getting any holier? That is numbers. Are we, success, are we succeeding at all to let God dwell in his creation? Very often the earth looks like a desert. That's why the fourth book is called Desert. Because the, the earth looks like a desert. When we look at the earth now, it's just head upon head. In our time, it's even worse. People have been killed for no reason. Is it last week, China and America couldn't agree on their, on their talks? It's like the, the earth is just getting worse. Because if China and America does not agree, we are, we are in trouble. They are the superpowers of the world. They say, is it the last saying which says, when New York coughs, the whole world catches a cold. So nothing is growing. That's what it, it looks like often that the earth looks like a desert. That's why the fourth book is called Desert. Nothing is growing. Nothing is happening. We are not making any progress. So, it's, so it seems on the surface. On the surface, it seems like we're not making progress. The fourth book of the Torah says, even when you, look, when you read the book of Numbers, it says, even if, even when things look like a desert underneath, I mean, even when things look like a desert, underneath, we are making progress. Every day we are getting closer. It keeps moving. It keeps building and accumulating. That's why we can be on this Zoom and discussing these things, because there's some progress, no matter how, how small they are. See, we are not a mutiny. I'm not saying we are raising a mutiny to, to go to China and, and America and just put those them out. I told you, we believe in the truth. The truth takes care of itself. Jesus Christ says, even Christ, the, the Jews thought Jesus had come to save them from the Romans. He, they thought he was a, he was a, uh, a rebeller, a mutiny. Like the other Jesus says, who came before him, the Maccabees, they were fighting for God. They take guns and arms like the crusaders in Europe. They went to fight us for God. But the truth I'm bringing you to is that yours is to align yourself, yourself to, to this natural truth, which is, which is, it is what it is. And it says, you will see, every man will receive punishment in their body according to what how they align themselves in, with the truth. So that's why you see, America can do anything to us, depress us, I mean, step on us, China, but watch the truth work. It's going to take care of them. Pestilences, wars, calamities. It takes care of itself. So that's what we are trying to talk about. We are making every progress day. We are every day we are getting closer. It keeps moving. It keeps building and accumulating. So the bad stuff, if you look at the earth, the bad stuff bends off after some time. We had Hitler. We had Mussolini. Bent off after some time. But the good lasts forever. Even, someone says, even sorrow, if so taken, as something you need as part of life. And then the fifth book, the last book. You are not put someone on. The, the fifth book, the last book is the conclusion. Deuteronomy. When we are ready to enter the promised land, the conclusion. So when we are ready to, the promised land is the 7,000 year period. It's the Psalms 710. With yet a little while, you wake up, you look for the wicked, you won't find him. 
So when we are ready to enter the promised land, how do you live in a perfect and completed world? That's what conclusion, I mean, that's what Deuteronomy is talking about. Basically, it is saying that there is one Torah, not five Torahs, one book is just explaining one purpose. There's one Torah because there's one plan, one vision. There's one desire that God has and it, and it comes in five stages, five volumes. I don't know if that is making sense. Let's chat a bit. I've talked too much. Is that making sense? How many minutes do we have? Very much. So maybe let us all summarize what I've said. So I don't want to be moving further and then just losing you. That's why we say these sessions must just be one hour. So that we pick up a nugget, we go with it. So let's begin. Whoever wants to start first, explain. Mulea, you want to start? Whoever wants, okay. Um, I think what really resonates with me in this discussion is when you when you mentioned the issue of uh, uh, self sacrifice, um, and you said that's why Jesus says we should be holy as His Father in heaven is holy. You know that really that really touched the nerve with me because it means that every time we live according to the truth, uh, this truth takes up space in our hearts, takes up space in our being to the point whereby ourselves are completely taken out. And that really is profound for me. That's awesome. Yeah, so we have talked about everything and we have said God as a five-fold plan. So I just want us just to discuss now. Mulea, our take is where we are saying that how, 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 how is this going to be? Because God's plan is to dwell, like, like we're saying, in the lowest part of his creation. And he, he chose five, a, a five plan, five step plan. We talk about the first part was, or maybe I talked about that. Let someone summarize. Ah, I don't want to be going back and back. I know as we summarize on our own, it becomes easy for others to understand also, because we'll be done soon. We give this, this discussion one hour every day, so that we will bring in one important topic, we discuss, we go with, we fit for one week, two weeks, until everyone understands, then, then we move. Next, wants to go next, Kathy? Or, da, or, or Darius? Or, or whoever wants to go next. Good morning, everyone. I think for me, um, I'm so blown away when you spoke about the why, the when, the what, and how this incorporates in the five books in the Bible. So that is something new, and that is something I'm trying to really, really digest and make sense of what you're saying. Okay. So that was very good. Okay, thanks. Darius? Darius, oh, Darius says, what is feeling to work? Okay, there he is. Darius, if you have something to say, you can go on. Ah, uh, but not to Dev Rev. Oh. The voice is not okay. Oh, yeah, your flu, of course. Okay. Okay, Moape, just try and summarize a bit before I say another thing. Because I've been I've been talking for almost an hour now. I don't want to lose us. Okay, um, I think um, as Kathy and uh, Mulea mentioned to say, I think today's discussion has really been has been I think has touched the nail, and um, I will explain it from different angles. So the first encounter is when you explain to somebody what we're trying to achieve with our platform that we're, the gatherings that we're having here on Zoom, when you're trying to explain to somebody, a person would think, 
you but you don't believe that for example jesus died and all that people will think like we're going in a way that is um we're taking a path of lawlessness so to say but i think from today's discussion i think so many things have been clarified and um not necessarily that we don't have reasons to give these people when they ask but i think today you've simplified everything and um I was reading another article and the article was um was about the mind how the mind operates mm -hmm. so the explanation was the mind emanates from the brain but mm -hmm. the brain the mind emanates from the brain but the mind takes up the universe mm -hmm. so i think it's it's in line with what you've explained and i think this is where like i felt so nice because um from the explanation that you gave the example you gave of noah Mm -hmm. Noah was born just like any other person. Yes. But then Noah's scripture tells us that he walked with God. Mm -hmm. How does an ordinary man end up walking with God? Mm -hmm. So I think now it's the process of us undergoing through the five stages of God's plans. Yes. Because you can't just fall from somewhere and you are there up on top. No. Mm -hmm. I think it we have to undergo these processes if we have to be like the patriarch so to say as uh, as the allegorical explains mm -hmm. so i think so from the first step uh the first uh process which is who mm -hmm. the who is referring to us human beings mm -hmm. and where it now where does god's plan take place it's in man and um how how is now the process of sacrifice mm -hmm. nothing can be achieved in life without sacrifice mm -hmm. even gathering like this today it's it's requiring sacrifice yes and um uh, from there now we go into the wilderness and uh the wilderness you've seen that nothing grows in the wilderness it's just uh, it's a desert mm -hmm. but from our discussion we've come to realize that in as much as we can be in that environment of the days that was still grow they still hope we're still going to emerge yes. and then the last which is the conclusion which is deuteronomy yes. which was trying to explain how we can be elevated to such an extent that we we will be able to walk with god mm -hmm. and uh the process of walking with god is not necessarily like the actual one it's basically the truth yes. elevates you mm -hmm. so even when you open your mouth to speak Mm -hmm. people will really follow you say okay this is god speaking yeah so i i i think there's so much that you that we're coming to learn and this is where i think now you separate the god from the sheep because now it's not religion this is something this is a way of life yes and uh i i think this is a, this is something that has to be appreciated very very much i think because it's uh, it's an enlightenment that that in, that is empowering us to live with ourselves yes. and not necessarily to look for hope in the sky mm -hmm. thank you so much you're welcome Mabe. and that's very elaborative and you've just summarized it the way it it uh, it was like i was saying we are going into dimensions where I was giving you an example that someone wrote to me. They were saying that um, they were finding it difficult to, to understand the platform because there's no praying. Don't know. We are praying. If they were defining religion. Even when in the first place we said this is not a religious platform, the way you would look at prayer in religion would be different from what we would look at. Because for us, we believe in the Bible. And the Bible, and like we say, is um, the bible is um is not historical it's not an historical book but in religion it's, it's an historical book because uh, they look at it in the um, fundamental way like paul would say they are drinking milk but when you go to, to perfection it's uh, prophetic it's allegories so they were saying there's no prayer there's no singing so you know something as i was chatting typing back Something told me, let me help this person. I told them, I said, 
you know what you're feeling is very good. If you feel there's no prayer here, which I'm accustomed to, and there's nothing, and it's, and it's eating you. My business, I'm not looking for people to convince. I'm looking for people who have seen the light and they want to learn. And I'm looking for people who are going to argue with me with the Bible, not from, from the mind. Remember, this is not philosophical. This is not, this is not religious. It has nothing to do with the Western ideas. This is the Bible, you see? So I said, uh, you know, the best thing you can do is that you join a church. It's going to be okay with you. You'll be, you, you're going to be very happy, you know? There is a God if you need a reason. For people who need, who need reasons, there's a God. We don't need a reason. We know that God wants to dwell in the lowest part of the earth. And, the, and the, he has got, uh, he's given us the Torah. I said the Torah was the, is the Bible. The, the whole Bible is just the five books. Then the other books explain the five books. So the, the Torah, the Jews, the way they, they, they gave, us, gave it to us. When you look at Genesis, Rome, even the titles were changed, like I was saying previously. Rome interpreted it in another way, in a childish way. Because Genesis, well, like I said, does not mean the beginning of creation, no. So when you read the Torah, you begin to want to understand that it's a plan, God's plan to dwell in the lowest part of the earth. And this plan has got, I mean, yeah, it has got stages. Eh? It has got visions. See? So, and these stages, we are saying, are in the five books. I was saying, the, basically, it is saying there is one Torah, not five Torahs. There is one Torah because there, there is one plan, one vision. There is one desire that God has, and it comes in five stages. These stages are Genesis. We said Genesis, the first book is who? We said when you are trying to plan, you need to, to, have, a, to have a cast. Who is going to make this plan of God to go in the lowest part of the earth come to fruit? to fulfillment. Who? Who is your cast? The second book is where? That's Deuteronomy. If you look at Deuteronomy, like I said, God painstakingly, in painstaking detail, defines, describes what the tabernacle is, even the measurements, 10 phalons, 10 fathoms, all that stuff, you know, very physical. And when you go to Paul, Paul tells you, you are the tabernacle actually. So they cast who and where in you, not in your ele elevated stage, in your human stage. The third book, that's the second book. So the first is who, the second is, who, is where, which is Exodus. The third, the third uh, is Leviticus. The third book is how. The fourth book is when. We talked about that, I'm summarizing, because we, we have to have a, a report when on how we are doing is the world getting any holier are we succeed success, succeeding at all like we said it's in the in the hebrew language it's called desert but the the romans who translated the bible called it numbers and we, we know that it nothing we think like when you're when you're in the desert like nothing is growing nothing is happening we are not making any progress. So it seems on the surface. But the fourth book of the Torah will tell you otherwise, which is Numbers. says, even when things look like in a desert underneath, we underneath, even when things look like a desert underneath, we are making progress. Every day we are getting closer. It keeps moving. It keeps building and accumulating. You know, the bad stuff, like I said, is burning out all the time. The bad stuff burns off every, after some time. Hitler was here, is gone. Mussolini was here, is gone. But the good lasts forever. Then I said, the fifth book is the conclusion, Deuteronomy. The conclusion is when we are ready to enter the promised land now. How do you live in a perfected and completed world? That's why when you go in Deuteronomy, God tells you of how to live. If you do this, then you'll be healthy. If you do this, then diseases will come to you. You know, there is a, so it's, it, it, it's saying that there is, that's what uh, is happening. So I told this person that uh, you are very, you're, you're going to be okay when you follow your heart like that. 
when you go into that stage. So this has been so profound. I don't know how many minutes do we have? Sorry, uh, I've seen some people have joined it a, a bit later, but uh, I will put the recording on YouTube for today because we always do it just one hour. We begin at 9.30, 10.50, we are done. So how many minutes do you have? Who's the admin today? Mulea or is it Mwate? It's me. Uh, we should have about 12 minutes. Okay, about 12 minutes. Okay, in 12 minutes, I can say, discuss something. But uh, at least now, mm, so far, you guys, do you have any question on what we are discussing? Because this is very profound. It will guide us on how we begin to understand the Bible. Like, like I, I, I always say, the Bible will always be our, our, our benchmark, the book we read from. We begin to understand it the way it is. We need to understand it. You see? We begin to uh, understand I it. Think, uh... mm -hmm. Okay, Mape, go on. Uh, it was just, uh, I was saying, uh, if maybe you can just um, re-emphasize maybe on the, quite right, we discussed the first five books which have been so significant in the three Abrahamic religions. Uh, the Jews are using the first five books, the Muslims consider the first five books, the Christians get the first five books and the rest of the books. So maybe just a different, maybe just an explanation on what may, what's the significance of the other books. I think you touched on, you, you explained, but my network, I think at that point had cut me off. You explained mm -hmm. to say, the other books are just trying to explain what the first five books are yeah, explaining. So, I don't know if. Mm -hmm. so, so what I said was, the Bible, if you're going to understand anything, first of all, you begin to understand that Christianity is very new. Christianity started in 325 AD at the Council of Nicaea. Christianity was started by Rome. You begin to open up your mind that the Bible is not a book for Christians. They adopted it. That's why it is called, it. Bible means collection. Then you begin to understand that the actors in the Bible are not Christian. You know, because we are so taken into these things, little things, that we think Jesus was a Christian. Moses was a Christian. Paul was a Christian. Even when we talk about Christianity, we say, like, Paul did, did, he was a Christian man. Those were not Christians. If you understand Paul, Paul was very spiritual, even Christ. You see? And then now, you begin to understand that who wrote the Bible? How did the Bible come about? The Jews, the Bible in its early stage was, came from the Torah. The, the Torah is still in existence. The Jews use it. The, the Torah has got five books. And these five books are what we're learning today. That These are the five stages in God's plan. I mentioned what these God's plans are. We said God's plan is to dwell in the lowest part of the, of the earth in man. So the books were like the steps. We said the, the book of Genesis is about the cast. When you're doing any plan, planning, you need to have your cast. Who? Who is going to fulfill that? The second book was where? Where we said in the tabernacle, the, uh, Deuteronomy he explains the, the tabernacle in painstaking details. And the tabernacle Paul says you are the, the tabernacle. The third book is how? Through sacrifice. You align yourself to the truth, not human truth, but the universal truth. The fourth book is when, you see, and uh, then we, we said conclusion is the, where, uh, when we conclude now is how now we live in this world. But to answer your question too quickly, I'm just trying to show that that's the way the Jews envisioned it. Genesis is not the beginning of creation. No, it's the beginning of God's plan. It's at some point in time. How was it going to plan this? As we go on from here, now we will begin to understand, even when we start reading Genesis, we know it's about the cast. So the other books, how did they come in? If you realize, Jesus Christ, when he, when he came as a son of man, he, would, he, was, he, would, he was going to speak like I would say to you. Jesus Christ said, there, there is only five steps in God's plan, the Torah. 
That's why when he comes, he says, I have not come to bring any addition. Just like me, I can I have no idea. Uh, whatever I'm telling you are not my, my ideas. You should run away from people who tell, the, who, uh, who tell you about the idea. So he says, I have not come to add or subtract to the law. It's called the law or the, or the Torah. But it says, but I've come to fulfill the law. So the other books, Mwate, what they come to do is explain the Torah. So everything in any other book, if it, if it does not resonate in any of the five steps, then it's, it's, then it's, it's false. That's why Paul, when he comes, he tells you that, um, though me, Paul, or I would say, though me, Reverend Nisofa, or an angel from heaven, preaches to you any other gospel uh, uh, apart from the Torah, let them be accursed. We don't mind if you say it, it's a so-called angels in your illusion or out. So the other books are just things explaining the Torah. Everything is complete in the five books. Then now, that's why when you begin to understand, to learn the Bible, you begin to marry it with the God's plan. Remember, even when Jesus says something, it will resonate with the past. Even me, if I'm speaking the truth, all the prophets must be in me. All of them must be in me. Because I'm alive, I become the head. Because I'm the one speaking their words. I'm, I'm just a robot. See, all of them were in, in me like that. I don't know if that's making sense, Mark. Yes, it is. And uh, maybe due to the interest of time, uh, maybe the last part I would just maybe. So is it maybe f from what I've been able to just understand, like the from these two different religions. So the, there's, uh, the Jews, they have the Torah and they have the Talmud. So the Talmud more explains their religion itself. But the Torah is something that was there. Would yeah. it be the same with Christianity where the New Testament was brought in to just more like back up the religion aspect exactly the the new testament is the is the footnote of the old testament remember paul says all things written a four time in the torah was written for our learning even the jews the, the jews have got the torah because the, the torah is prophetic it's not um it's not historical so they created the Talmuds, like the footnote of the torah so the, the, the Talmud now brings everything in the Torah and puts it in their casual life. Just like the Torah also is still, they got the natural truth and put it in everyday Jewish culture. That's why if you follow the Torah, the, the Torah is, is, is historically, you will understand what I'm saying, that the Bible is not historical. I showed you in the book of, um, is it uh, number seven, where where Joshua was told by God, if someone rebels from God, from me, catch him, take him to the market square, stone him to death, stone him, stone him, after he dies, heap stones on him, make a hill of stone, a heap of stone, so that everyone who passes by know that they have no business messing around with the God of Israel. Now, if you take it literally, would you worship that God? You see, I, I said to, to, to tell you that the Jews got the truth and then put it in their culture. Remember, I, I told you God's plan is to dwell in the lowest part of the earth, in man. So when you to talk about stoning someone, I showed you a, another example where God says, when you find the Amalekites, because they did not do well with God, when you find them, kill them, beginning from their children, their gods, their everything. Then when you go in the, in the Jewish understanding, Amalekite means the flesh, your flesh. So it's allegorical, it's not historical. So when you say kill them, it means when you find fault in your flesh, kill it, not literally. That's why Paul says, I die every day. You are the tabernacle. So when God is explaining the tabernacle in painstaking, he's explaining you. Remember, the, the tabernacle is the dwelling place of God. It's the temple. And the temple had three parts. The outer court, the holy place, and the holy of holies. The outer court, Paul shows that in, in Hebrews, is the flesh. The holy place is the, is the mind. The holy of holies is the spirit. 
and the symbols found there, it shows them. In the holy place, you have the table and the showbread. The table means fellowship. We fellowship in the mind, literally. Then the showbread is what I'm showing you. It's the, it's the, it's the gospel the preacher preaches to you. But now in the Holy of Holies, there was the, the pot of manna and the road of iron that and the road of iron that budded. The pot of manna, manna is a genuine truth, it's in the spirit. And, the, and there was a burning incense. Burning incense represents the, the prayer. Your prayer has gone as a sweet smelling savor to God. So that's why I say you begin now to apply that on your life. In the in, in your mind, you, you that's why you cannot pray in your mind, in your soul. Prayer is, is in the holy of holies. Prayer is not muttering words like a ritual, Father, Father God. Prayer is your lifestyle. Prayer is your lifestyle against God. Your lifestyle is aligned to the truth. Your lifestyle is a prayer to God. It's in the holy place. I'm sorry, it's in the holy of holies. You cannot even pray to God, God, I need a car, I need a husband. That's in the mind. In the holy of holies, it's about God's plan. We pray for God's plan. Are we together? That's why Jesus Christ says, seek he face God's plan. Then these things will be added to you. How many minutes again? I know we're running out of time.